Okay, I'm uh, Jason Farrell, and I have, I'm a co-founder of a, of a design studio called Use All Five, and we do a lot of big web design um, and development for clients like Google, uh, UCLA, VW, um, all sorts of big projects, and um, yeah, we're out in Venice, and yeah, I'm just going to just dive in and start talking about 3D now. Okay, so 3D and I go way back. There's this TV show called Reboot that I used to wake up every Saturday morning to, uh, to watch, and it's incredible, and the graphics are spectacular. And it kind of drives the way I look at the world now, I think, because of this, this cheesy TV show. And so it's where I kind of approach things, and that's kind of what is, it's, just keep this in the back of your head. That's, um, that's where I'm at. And right now, 3D on the web is crazy. There's all these like, incredible visualizations and, and just, just like these games and just like, everything is like, out of control. And if you look at the source code, it makes no sense at all. <laughs> um, and so this is really exciting. And I've been dabbling in a lot of this, but still, I'm not a computer scientists. I, I, I don't know how to do this stuff at all, and we're not going to be focusing on any of this. I just thought I'd, I'd share. This is not <laughs> what we're going to be doing. <laughs> and they're very talented people that, that create these incredible things. So, uh, so first, let's step back and talk a little bit about how 3D works, how you take these, these objects and render it to a 2D um, to a 2D screen. So it's a lot like making a movie. You got your actors, which are, we're gonna, or you got your props uh, more specifically, and you just tell them to move around. And you have a camera, and, um, and then I consider myself the director of the scene. And so um, that's, kind of, that's kind of what you do in JavaScript. You just take an object and you, you pull it around and you, you put it into a scene and you you animate it, and it's pretty simple with 3JS. It's um, the uh, the guy that created it uh, just made WebGL incredibly easy, and so let's uh, let's just start dabbling and diving into a scene and seeing how it works. So we're gonna set up a base movie set right now, and so I got a scene, a camera. I hope you guys can all see this. So um, you take a scene, a camera, and then there's this thing called a renderer that just puts it together and displays it on the web. And here, I'm just pulling back the camera 120 points. There's actually no real units of measurement. I, it's kind of confusing. It's not pixels. It's just it's vectors. And so everything's kind of relative. And when you drop things into the 3D scene, it's all in the middle. Anyway, so that's kind of how you get set up. There's these, so there's these weird variables up here, aspect, far, Fav, near, uh, what does all that mean? Well, they define this thing called the frustrum. And what happens is you throw your objects into that, into that back area, the near plane and the far plane. You want everything in your scene to be in there. If you put it too, fur too, far, too close to the camera, it's going to get cut off like that, uh, like that golf ball right there. And so, yeah, so back to 3JS, it gives you when you create a renderer, it gives you a DOM element. You just take that DOM element and um, you put it onto your, your scene. So it gives you this, this canvas, this WebGL canvas. Just you throw it in there. It's that easy. And a um, couple things I'm doing here just to get set up. Got a black background, um, a shadow. You can cast shadows. Um, and then we're setting the size to the background size. So. Let's just, let's just see how, so this is just an example of just there's some, a shape in there and I'm move, pulling the camera back. It's like that simple. So I'm just setting this variable and pulling the camera's Y position. So I'm just moving this thing around with just editing these, these variables. All right, so now, now that we've got a basic understanding of how this works, let's try to apply this to something that we could actually use. Um, in our web apps or uh, websites. So what I have in mind is this, created a fake, fake little 
micro site called Spaceland. And what it's got is some content, some links, uh, some titles, text, and scrolls. And wouldn't it be exciting um, to have some sort of interesting background? Um, there we go. So everyone remembers Space Jam. This is my inspiration for this background. Let's, uh, let's make this like, let's go back to the, to the early days of the web and create a starry 3D star kind of background. If you cross your eyes, it's kind of like a magic eye. You could, anyway. All right. Um, here's how the scene's set up. We got, so throughout this, this talk, I'm going to reference uh, three different apps, a background, ooh, background, CTA, and a title, right? And then everything's controlled in this app.js at the end. So we're going to start with this background. So first off, we're going to set it up. Um, just add some lights, sets the scene up, which you saw that function before, and it renders it. And then we return this little API here. Uh, just a simple update and render, which we're going to use later on. And so on the, um, on the background JS, let's first start. I know, we got to get all this boilerplate code out of the way, and then it'll get exciting. So you first create this render thing that just takes the scene and the camera, puts it together, and renders it. And then I'm creating another thing on my app.js, the thing that's controlling it, um, another render that actually, that actually calls that render because we're going to have a whole bunch of apps and we're going to want this guy to control it. And once everything's ready, and uh, we're going to send in this background element and render it. And right now, we're going to do this. We're going to create just a sphere um, with this method that we're about, I'm about to show you called add point. And it's going to create a sphere with a white background, uh, 45 uh, radius, and then the other things are quality of like of of um, x and y. So it's not the best quality. It's it's kind of low fi and that's intentional. So so this is how the function works. We got add point, and it takes a couple the width segments and height segments, which is basically the quality of it. The more the higher that number is, the better quality it's going to be, and it's going to look more like a sphere. And um, then we're going to start creating the geometry. And 3 gives us this thing called the sphere geometry. There's a ton of geometry that you can use. I'm going to focus on some really basic stuff. Not going to get into the complicated stuff right here. And then we're going to use a mesh Lambert just to make it a white, just a white color. Um, yeah, it's just going to take my color. And it was white before. And we're going to make it transparent so it's kind of see-through. And we're going to give it a 80% opacity. Then here we're going to put it together, and this thing just returns it. And so the goal now is to make this star field. So I'm just going to make a simple loop. And, and what this loop does is it, it's going to make 600 stars. And then we're going to loop through them, and then randomly plot x, y, and z in these in this range. And so to find this range, I just uh, move things around on the screen to get like where it would be from the top, bottom, left, what, all over the sides of the browser. And, and then on the, uh, the next up, what I'm going to do is map it to the scroll. So as you scroll, it's going to be, it's going to create this parallaxing effect. And I just take the camera's Y and tie it to however far it is as you're scrolling down the page. So it looks like this. <laughs> yeah. So it was super simple to do this. And it adds a lot of depth to it. And uh, just for fun, I made it so that as you're after you stop scrolling, it doesn't render it. Rendering just means updating the, the screen. So it's still going to have that star field on there. It's just as you, once you let go of the scroll, it, uh, it's no longer going to update. So your fans on your computer aren't going to be spinning out of control all the time, which is a big deal. All right, now let's add another 
layer of uh, complexity to this. So we got this learn more call to action, the CTA. Um, let's punch this up. So I was looking around what would be appropriate for this, and it turns out the dodecahedron, some people consider, is the shape of the universe. And so I thought that shape would be perfect for my click here. I don't really know what I'm selling on this website, but <laughs> I kind of want to buy it. <laughs> and so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this uh, dodecahedron a wireframe. And uh, yeah, so. So right here, all I've got is this dodecahedron geometry. And I've got a different um, a fong material, a mesh fong. And that's a little more shiny than the, um, the, than the star fields. And I made it pretty opaque, so it's only 30% visible. And then we got this wireframe true variable here that's going to create that outline instead of making it all white. And this thing only has, there's only two um, uh, variables you want to really uh, add to the like parameters is the radius and the detail. There's a couple other ones, but these are the only ones you really want to pay attention to. If you up the detail past zero, it's just, uh, it's not going to be a dodecahedron. And then so, let's animate it. And so rendering is updating all the time, every time that um, it, it's just in a loop. And so if you rotate the shape, it's going to refresh it, draw it again, refresh it, and draw it again. So let's slowly increment the rotation x and y. And so we're going to make this thing spin. And so here's what it looks like. All right. So this should be uh, should be pretty easy, right? You just click on it and you and it will uh, it'll work, right? Not really. Um, the problem with clicks, or not click. Um, the problem with trying to touch a 3D shape or a 3D thing is that it's pulled back. It's you're in a two. Your a mouse can only go x and y. It can't go z. So you can't really move into it. So that's where lasers come in. And so it's pretty much this thing called ray casting. And what it pretty much does is you shoot laser beams and see and detect to see if it hits an object in your scene. And um, it's, it, that was pretty straightforward, but one of the caveats of 3JS is that it's constantly being developed. And so all the examples right now are way out of date to, because they just pushed up a new version a few weeks ago. And so none of these click events worked. There's these libraries that didn't work. Um, there's this great library called uh, DOM events that 3x put out. And it makes it as simple as just a mouse click. But that didn't work with the current version. Luckily, I highly recommend just Googling and going on GitHub all the time because there's a PR. And so I was able to uh, just link to a specific commit that some guy just wrote and committed. And so I <laughs> added it right there. And now click events are super simple. And here's, here's it in action. Is click it, and it grows. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to show you how to uh, how to do that. So it, it's very simple. You just declare a new three X DOM event, and uh, you hook in the, the 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 DOM element in the camera, and it does its magic and uh, listens for events on that, that, um, that 3D object. So a click, that works. You just click on. So, so on the code here, I'm going to talk a little bit about animating, actually. So there's this great library that I've been using since the days of Flash called, uh, called Tween Max. And it's very simple. You just take an object that has properties, so shape.material, and opacity is the property of the material. And you give it a time, and it animates it from whatever opacity, or whatever that variable, or whatever that property is at now, it's going to animate it to, uh, to 1. So if it's at 0, it's going to take it, it's going to just 
tween that to one for that duration of time that you specify. And so, uh, super simple and, and super impressive at the same time. And so, that's where we get the, uh, so we're on click we're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna animate the scale of, um, of it. And then we're gonna reset the scale back. So it's gonna run these two, at the right, one right after the other. So the delay on this one is set for the time right before it. So it's gonna execute that animation, then the next one which brings it back down. All right, so that's, so that's events. Now, all that's left is an eye-catching title. It's pretty boring before where it just said like space gate or whatever, space land. All right, so, so now let's, let's kind of go back to all those really interesting things that we saw at the beginning. So there are these like all these 3D objects floating around particle systems, maybe it does have a use. Maybe we can take that and apply it to something as simple as a website. So I thought, why not make the Spaceland title swoop in of particles? And that would be pretty eye-catching, and it would make me want to buy whatever Spaceland is. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this. And what it really is, is it just a bunch of 3D objects that are plotted to, to parts in space. So how do, we, how do we know the words? Like how do we know where these letters are? Like what, where to throw those, those 3D elements? So we're gonna use another, another canvas. So WebGL always is on a canvas. And right now there's three or there's two canvases on the page. We're gonna draw another one. And we're gonna just draw some simple type. And so it draws the type. It's actually not gonna render it on the page. It's just doing it in the background. And we're gonna take um, the word space land. And we're gonna actually grab that from the headline text. So that's just the H1's text. We're gonna take that text and we're gonna plot it under this canvas. And there's this neat canvas, um, this canvas tool called Get Image Data, where it's a, just a property, it's free. And you just loop through it, and you can get all the pixels in that, and you can check to see is there a color in this pixel or not. And so here's a, it looks really complicated, it's not. It's just, it checks to see if um, that, fifth line down that if image data. It's checking every third pixel to see if it is a color. And, and if it does have a color, let's, um, let's, create a let's make a random color that just generates a arbitrary uh, color, gives us a point, and then plots it in 3D to the X and Y of, of that pixel. And then, since it's just a 2D image, there's no Z, so everything would be in the same spot. I wanted to make this look a little more interesting, so what we did is we got the position Z and threw a random 10, so it'll plot them in like random, random space. And, um, but that's, that's what you saw before, and it's not that, not that interesting. Let's animate it. So we're gonna start it from a random spot, just like we did with the space field. So we're gonna throw these all, all these colorful 3D shapes, scatter them randomly across the canvas. And so we do that by um, setting the position just random, 500 by 500 by 500. And then let's rotate them to a random rotation. And then we're gonna simply animate them between max again and tween max just brings it back to where that pixel was. And so, this is what we got. And this is the entire Spaceland website. Yeah. Any questions?
Yes. There's all sorts of, um, I think you have to, there are lots of converters that can take a 3D object. That's pretty much like the, what most people like get started with, like trying to load in those things. And, and I'm trying to go f far out and do really boring things with it. <laughs> uh, right. What was that? There is, um, that's a great question. I think there's like 500 maybe or so. You can up it and it gets really condensed. You can make it really short and then it's a really like thin letter. Like not thin, but there's less points that map to it. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty new to this, but how are you putting in the OpenGL and WebGL and is there DNS HTML? How, how are you including all that in the website? Yeah, so it's just JavaScript files in the in the index.html. Like yeah, yeah, you can just do it that way. Um, I'm using uh, Bower for dependencies to get like all the uh, the libraries, but for the sake of this demo, it's just in at the bottom. In JavaScript includes. Yep. Um, if you wanted to do like make it accessible, um, like the title, would you do like um, like get like the title inside the canvas tag? What would you do? Oh, yeah, that would be, I think, I think you can render it out in like 2D as well, but it's going to be pretty slow. It's, this uses WebGL. Uh, what I would do to make it degrade is just not have the WebGL like, show up. It would just be the text, because Internet Explorer 7 doesn't deserve this. <laughs> oh. oh, OK. Good, good question. <laughs> much better, much better use. Yeah, um, yeah, so what I did in that example, I just took the, um, I grabbed the text from that H1 and tur it turned whatever that text was into that. So it just writes it into the canvas and then plots those points to that. So it's comple it, it, com it drays completely. And the source is up here at, a, it's just a GitHub, uh, but there's a tiny URL so you can check it out and you can play with all that. So you can see how it just pulls from the H1 tag and, and just turns that into a canvas or to a 3D a WebGL canvas. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Do you use the uh, 3JS and WebGL for data visualizations or anything like that, or mostly just kind of an aesthetic? Um, I'm trying to think of what. In mostly aesthetic. Um, I did, like, way back in Flash, did a lot of this stuff, like, back in the day. Okay. But uh, n haven't used this yet for that. But yeah, that's a good use for, for that's, like, where 3JS really shines. But yeah, I'm trying to show boring uses of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Any, any other questions? All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.